So that's the sun path, and this can be useful for a number of things. The next thing we're going to do is actually generate the sun rays, just like we did with heliotrope, um, to generate the geometry of the sun that we can use in our shadow casting and projections. So to generate the sun rays, we can go to the eco sun rays node. So here's the node. It's very similar. It has an execute input and then a series of outputs that control um, ecotech. So here is the first implementation of this chaining workflow for Gecko, where we can uh, connect the setup done output of the eco sun path node to the execute input of the sun ray node. And what this will do basically is it'll control how processes are executed in Ecotech so Ecotech doesn't start running everything at once because that might make it crash. It also might make it do the things in the wrong order. So we daisy chain these together. Uh, we have a true, so this is executing, but we need to give it some information about where we want those sun rays to be created. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is plug in the day and month again for my inputs from before. So these are the same day and month. Um, then it needs a time value, so this is in military time again from 0 to 24 hours. You can specify an exact time of day to generate the sun ray. So the first thing you can do is say uh, at 2, at 2 o'clock, which is 14, um, we can just specify with a slider what's the sun angle there. And then for the scale factor, we're going to plug in the scale factor from before, so then it scales directly with uh, the rest of our sun system. So right now we're looking at 2 o'clock. You see it doesn't visualize anything, it just gave us a few points because what it creates are actually vectors which are not visible in the preview by default. Um, to visualize the vectors, we can use the vector display node. For the anchor points, this is where the vector visualization will start. We can use these position points. And then for the vector, we can plug in the vector. So you see here now it's created that vector as a previewed line. Um, by default, it will go to the origin. And what we probably want to do is put in a scale factor. So we can just create a multiplication node, plug in the vector and then create a slider so we can scale that vector from zero to one. So one will be all the way to the point or to the origin uh, and we can scale it down and just plug in the result of that back into vector and now we have control over how long that vector is. Okay, so this is all purely for visualization so we can see what the vector is doing. Um, the real useful part of this is the vector geometry itself. So we're gonna actually use this vector for our shadows. So here's our vector. Uh, just like before, we can use one vector or we can do a series of them for different times of the day. Um, so to do a series of vectors, we just specify a number of times uh, in the day. And we'll do that like always with a range component. So the range will take in some domain. Uh, and this will be the min and the max of all the hours that we want to look at. And then a number uh, of times that we want to divide that range into. So to start with, maybe we can specify using a panel some range that we're interested in. Maybe I want to look at from noon to, um, I don't know, four o'clock or six o'clock. So we can plug that into the domain. And then for the number, I want to look at maybe, let's we'll start with 10 times in the day. So we'll plug that into number. So the range, you can see it creates 11 numbers between 12 and 8. And we can plug all of those into the time. And now we have a series of vectors between the times that we want. So going from noon until 6 in the evening. Um, if we want to look at the whole day, um, we can also directly plug in the sunrise sunset into this. Because sunrise sunset, you can see, creates a domain. And then that's exactly what this is looking for. So if you plug this in here you actually get a range over the entire day, which is driven by the number of segments we specified. So we increase this and decrease that. So you can see it's very similar to um, how we were working with Heliotrope, but the advantage of Ecotech is everything is a little bit more specific. So instead of kind of guessing 
uh, and dividing things equally, we can specify exact hours of the day, and everything is brought in about where we are um, located in the world. Okay, so there's our basic setup. It's pretty diagrammatic right now. Um, the major component of this that we're going to use are these sun vectors to do um, a shadow study. And this works a lot like before. Um, the shadow study doesn't really come from Ecotech itself. Uh, we can do this using Rhino tools. So last time I showed you how to do this, I think, with projections. Uh, this time I'm going to use a different tool uh, within Grasshopper just to show you a variety of ways you can do this, which actually calculates um, the amount of time that rays fall into a mesh. So this is a little bit more of a ecotextile style analysis, but it's built into the mesh tools within, um, within Grasshopper.